welcome students so we are continuing with the problem that i discussed in the in my previous lecture and uh, we were talking about that uh, after taking into account the di direct expenses and direct incomes now in the lower part this part is called as profit and loss account we don't write here profit and loss account but up to this part when you calculate the gross profit this part is called as trading account trading account is ending here you have to close it by two lines and the trading account is complete now but you have to continue after that and continuing after that will uh, give us idea about means uh, will be preparing uh, the the profit and loss account where we will be talking about the indirect incomes adding into the direct income that is in the gross profit and then subtracting the indirect expenses and then calculating the final divisible profit which is called as profit after tax so now we'll take the expenses and expenses here are uh, again you have to check it up cash bank purchases inwards fuel and power carriage on sales yes this is the first indirect expense carriage on sales so you can take it in the same order two carriage two carriage on sales and the carriage on sales is 3200 is there any adjustment with regard to this carriage on sales no there is no adjustment we can find out so it is 3200 carriage on sales is 3200 then we have carriage on purchases we have already taken that in the trading account carriage on purchases stock we have already taken into account buildings freehold land and machinery we will not take that into account its assets plant and machinery is also assets yes next is the salaries two salaries two salaries is the uh other but i think with regard to salaries we have some adjustment here so this adjustment is here we'll see what is this adjustment first you put the amount of salaries and amount of salaries is 115000 that is in the inner column this is salaries amount and salaries for the month of december 2012 amounting to rupees 1500 were unpaid this is called as expenses outstanding or unpaid expenses now you recall the adjustment we have discussed while talking about the adjustments i have discussed with you that if there is any expense which has become due but not yet paid that is called as a outstanding expense and outstanding expenses have to be added into the total means existing head of expenses so head of expenses is salaries we have paid 15000 worth of salaries but the total salaries due to be paid to the employees has become 15000 plus 1500 so you have to add now this so it is unpaid salaries uh, add unpaid salaries and they are 1500 so total salaries balance is 16500 total salaries is 16500 so first effect of this i have taken here in the profit and loss account by adding this unpaid salaries into the existing balance of salaries and the second effect of it will come in the balance sheet and in the balance sheet you will put it in the liability side until unless you pay the outstanding expense that is kept on showing as the liability that is the outstanding Uh, expense and it will go as a liability in the balance sheet so first effect is in the profit and loss account debit side and second effect will be in the liability side of balance sheet then we have general expenses next is the general expenses so it is two general expenses general expenses here are 3000 and i guess there is no uh, adjustment with regard to general expenses here if you look at these there is no adjustment with regard to general expenses similarly next is the insurance two insurance this is basically the insurance premium we pay we buy the insurance policies for the firm's assets and then we pay the premium on that so premium is the revenue expense which is paid only for one year so that is the insurance premium it's not written here that insurance premium or anything if insurance is written it means it's a insurance premium and this is 600 insurance premium is 600 we are taking here and there is some adjustment with regard to the insurance premium and that is insurance includes a premium of rupees 170 on a policy expiring on 30th june 2013 now what does it mean is it outstanding or it is paid in advance 
because we are preparing the financial statements as on 31st December 2012. When we are preparing these statements on 31st December 2012, it means this is the last date of the year for which we are preparing the financial statements, right? Now, this amount 170 is a premium out of the total premium of 600 rupees, 170 is paid on a policy which is uh, say expiring on 30th June 2013, means we have paid the premium in advance means that premium which will be expiring, we have already paid the premium till 2013, 30th June till 2013. It means we will have to now take that into account because we have paid it in advance. Because we are preparing accounts till 12, we are not preparing it till 13. So, 13th premium if you have paid till 13, that part is extra that is paid in advance. So, you have to subtract that less premium paid in advance, premium paid in advance. So, it means this premium paid in advance is 170 and you have to subtract that. So, if you subtract that then is this is how much? This is 430 rupees premium which has been paid in advance. So, we will have to means that for total premium actually due for the year is 430 rupees not 600. So, we have to subtract that. Then is the sundry debtors, we will not take that into account, we will because this is an asset. So, we will take at the time when the asset, when we will prepare the balance sheet. So, we have done this adjustment stock, we will do the second part in balance sheet. Yes, now we come to the next thing that is the depreciation. One of the important uh, indirect expenses to depreciation and depreciation is Depreciation here said machinery to be depreciated at the rate of 10 percent and plant at the rate of 20 percent. Machinery at the rate of machinery is 20,000 worth. So, it is to be depreciated at the rate of 10 percent and plant planted machinery is 7500, so 20 percent. So, we will take the depreciation here and we can calculate it, it for both put it in the inner column and take only one item in the outer column together. So, to depreciation this is this amount is uh, 10 percent on the uh, machinery. So, 20,000 and 10 percent is 2000 and then we have plant this is machinery and then we have plant and machinery which is 7500 and it is 20 percent. So, this works out as 1500 rupees that is 20 percent of 7500 and this is 3500. 3500 worth of the machinery. So, we are, we are putting it here depreciation we have also taken. So, stock we have adjusted depreciation part we have taken into account, salaries we have taken into account, insurance premium we have taken into account and rent receivable we have taken into account. So, now we will take the bad debts. So, I am uh, continuing with here means we will prepare a small here. So, it is the two bad debts. So, it is this part is we will take it then continuing two bad debts and bad debts amount is bad debts amount is uh, 725. So, this will come directly one item only 725. So, now we are continuing with the incomes part and incomes total incomes if you count so 53,715 and uh, this no other income only two incomes are there. So, we have taken that into account. And then it is the expenses we have already taken into account. So, one is the carriage on sales 3200, salaries total 16500, general expenses 3000, insurance premium is 430, depreciation is 3500 and then it is 725. So, now we will have to total it up and when you total it up I again guess that this credit side is bigger in this case also as compared to the debit side. So, it means we have the credit balance here and credit balance in the profit and loss account is a profit not the loss. So, it is 53,715. So, we are closing it by 2 lines and the difference is 2 net profit, 2 net profit. So, this net profit will be if you total these this, this, this and this and this 
and this if you total it up you will get the net profit of 26,360 this is the difference 26,360 is the net profit if you total it up now this total will be equal to the 53,715 again we can check it up 5 and then it is uh, this so it is 5 so we can say that is 2, 8, 8 and then 11, 11, 11 means this is 1 then it is 1 then it is 8, 11 then it is uh, uh, 16, 16 is 20, 20 and uh, uh, this uh, 25 and 2, 27 so it is we can check it up that it is 53,715 is the net profit. Now if some tax related information is given then you will write here you will write here in two net profit NPBT it is net profit before tax then you say two corp two tax or corporate tax or income tax whatever it is written you will put it here and then you will find something that is uh, two net profit you will not put a line here but you will see that tax part and two net profit it is no and and pat and a pad that is a net profit after tax and that will be here. But since we are not given any information about the tax part, so we will assume that it is this firm is not liable to pay any tax. So whatever the profit we have calculated here that is the net profit after tax and that is the final profit divisible profit of the firm and the amount is 26,360 and that is the final profit of the firm which will be going to the balance sheet will be invested in the balance sheet. Had it been a public limited company though maybe the part of the profit is going to be distributed as a dividend and then part of the profit is going to be transferred to the reserves that is specific reserves of the general reserves. But since it is a known company form of the organization so it means here we have the way that total profit is transferred to the balance sheet and added in the capital in the balance sheet. So now let us prepare the balance sheet for this uh, form and try to find out whether the financial position of the firm is acceptable or not. Whether the financial position is acceptable of the firm is acceptable or not that we have to do here now. So we will check with the help of the profit and loss account we are trying to assess the profitability of the firm and by preparing the balance sheet we try to find out the financial position of the business that thing should be very clear to you that what is the purpose of profit and loss account that we check the profitability or the profit or loss position of the firm and by preparing the balance sheet we check the financial position of the firm which is checked only for one day in a year and profit or loss is worked out for a period of one year that is over a period of one year 12 months that is accounting period how much profit or loss the firm has earned how much profit or loss the firm has earned that we have to check. So let us now calculate try to prepare the balance sheet again the same format T format we call it as a T format. This is the balance sheet balance sheet of alpha corporations corporation as on we write here as on 31st December 31st December 2012 that is the balance sheet of alpha corporations as on 31st December 2012 here you will take capital and liability capital and liabilities this is the amount this is assets and this is amount this is the asset and this is the amount now we will start with the capital and liabilities and then we will take all the assets and then try to see whether both the sides are equal or not. So let us start prepare the balance sheet so it is the capital no to no buy please bear in your mind we have to take no to no buy 
So, capital balance here is uh, 56,755 this is one in this we will have to add the net profit and what was the net profit we had already calculated 26,360 or any drawings or any other information is there pertaining to drawings or anything if that is there then we will have to take that into account but if that is not there then that can be ignored means there is no other information so it means there is no drawings nothing so you have to add this and add net profit so this is uh, 5 this is 11 1 this is uh, 10 11 1 and then it is uh, 13 1 and this is 8 so it is 83,115 is the uh, total capital of the business. So, it means initially we started in this year, we started with the capital of 56,755 and then we earned a profit of 26,360 and then the total capital we added that profit into the capital and our capital balance has gone up to the extent of 83,115. So, it you 5, 5, 6, 11, uh, 6, 5, 11, 1, 11, 1, then what and then so it is 83,115 is the balance of the capital. Any other liability? Yes, we have the one more liability that is sundry creditors. They are sundry creditors. Here we have sundry creditors. So, sundry creditors are 6,300s, 6,300s or any other liability. If you look at this credit balances, you do not find any liability here. Sales we have already taken, return outward we have taken, capital we have taken here, sundry creditors we have taken here, rent we have already taken. Now you come down to this lower part of the adjustments. Stock is the asset will go in the asset side of balance sheet, machinery depreciation will be adjusted in the asset side of balance sheet. Salaries, yes, outstanding salaries. So, outstanding salaries, one effect we have done in the profit and loss account, second effect we are doing here. So, it is you write here as outstanding oblique as salaries and outstanding salaries are 1500. I think these are the total liabilities to be taken to the liability side of the balance sheet. So, we have already taken these liabilities here. Now, we come to the asset side and assets we start with the land. So, it is a freehold land. It is the freehold land and the freehold land balance is how much? That is 10,000. No adjustment, nothing because land has no adjustment, it is never, it never depreciates, it appreciates, but we do not record the appreciation. So, land we have taken, then we have to go for the machinery, but you have already provided the depreciation on this. So, machinery balance is 20,000 and we have to charge the depreciation 10 percent. So, it is less second effect of the depreciation, one effect we have already taken in the profit and loss account. So, second effect is here. 2000 here. So, now the balance of the machinery is 18000. <coughs> balance of the machinery is 18000. Then is the plant and machinery. Plant and machinery. So, what is the balance of plant and machinery? It is 7500. Less depreciation. So, depreciation amount is 1500. So, it is the balance left with us will be 6000s balance left with us is the 6000s plant and machinery we have taken any other asset you have with this plant and machinery salaries general expenses insurance sundry debtors yes sundry debtors we are taking here now sundry debtors we are taking here sundry debtors and this is 14500s but we have an adjustment here that is the bad debts 725. It means these 725 are not adjusted already. So, it means they are part of sundry debtors. So, you have to write here less one effect of this we have taken in the profit and loss account debit side and now second effect we are taking here. So, 725. So, we are left with how much the balance of the debtors is that is 13,000. 775, 13,775 is the balance of sundry debtors 
and then we have uh, any other asset if you look at yes then we have the closing stock closing stock we have closing stock here closing stock to balance is 6800 so we have taken this also any other asset now if look at this side there are the two more assets which we have left cash in hand and cash at bank but the balance of cash at bank it is 2630 that is a cash at bank 2630 cash at bank and then is a uh, cash in hand is the 540 540 is the cash in hand so we have taken this also now again apply a check we have taken the cash in hand we have taken the cash at bank purchases no return inverse no wages no fuel and power no carriage on sales no carriage on purchases no buildings yes we have forgotten the buildings very important part so you have to put it here before the debtors because it is a permanent asset long term asset so we prepare the balance sheet in the order of permanence so buildings are 32 thousands and there is no depreciation on the building so we will not have to provide any kind of the depreciation on the buildings directly we will have to take the buildings here so we have taken the buildings we have taken the freehold land we have taken the machinery we have taken the plant and machinery and we have taken the uh, salary general expenses and insurance they are not the subject of the balance sheet and then sundry debtors we have already taken and if you talk about here uh, the credit balances are the liabilities we have already taken the liabilities so nothing to worry about then stock in hand yes we have taken the closing stock here yes we have taken the closing stock then is the machinery we have taken depreciation of machinery and the plant and machinery we have already taken salaries gone already outstanding part is taken in the balance sheet that is 1500 insurance include a premium of 170 on a policy expiring on 30th june yes this is the insurance premium paid in advance insurance premium paid in advance insurance premium paid in advance and this is uh, 170 rupees yes this is paid in advance then we have bad debts we have already adjusted the bad debts yes i guess yeah we have done that rent receivable rent which is income earned but not yet received so this is the asset rent receivable rent receivable so rent receivable is how much it is 1000 so it is 1000 we have taken the rent receivable 1000 so i guess all the assets we have taken into account now there is nothing left stock we have taken machinery depreciation we have taken salaries we have taken insurance we have taken bad debts we have taken rent receivable we have taken so all assets all the liabilities we have taken them into account and now we will have to see in the liability side also almost everything is over so let us see whether both the sides are equal or not and total it up so we have it is here 5 it is here 1 it is here uh, uh, 4 5 9 and this is uh, 6390 and then it is 90 so it is 90115 one side total is 90115 uh, sorry 90915 is the total of the liability side so is it equal to the asset side let's check uh, here it is say 5 then we uh, take here it as 7 3 10 14 then it is 21 yes seems to be same 2 2 then it is uh, 0 then it is 9 9 and 8 is uh, 17 17 and 6 uh, 23 23 and 5 28 29 yes very good so coming up equal that is 9 then it is uh, so it was 29 2 so it is 3 9 2 11 3 14 then it is 6 20 then it is 22 and it is uh, so what happened here so we are going to have some different balance here okay that may be the difference so it is 2 8 8 10 10 
So, a 10 and we have a 6, 16, 16 and 2, 18, 18 and 3, 21, 21 and 6, 29, 29 and 2, 32. So, it is going to be some different amount. Let us check the values. We have the buildings 32,000, good. Then we have uh, freehold land is 10,000, fine. Then we have uh, machinery 18,000, fine. Then we have a plant and machinery 6,000, fine. We have the same figures. Then it is sundry debtors 13,775. Then we have uh, yes, uh, cash in hand 540. Then we have uh, uh, say cash at bank this is 2630 and then we say uh, insurance is 170 good and then it is a rent it is fine we have taken the same amount and then we talk about the closing stock. So, closing stock figure is 6800 rupees. So, all the figures are correct. So, it means we have to uh, we have already checked. So, we have taken here it is the 5 then it is uh, 7 3 1 then it is uh, say 9 then we will be taking here is as uh, say 0 and then we will be taking the last figure as uh, 1 1 2 and then 3 5 6 and 3 9. So, it is 90,915. The balance sheet has equal balances both the sides are equal the balance sheet is balanced it should come little down. So, it should be because it should be looking like a balanced uh, document both the sides should be equal both the sides should be balanced. So, it is 90,000. 915. So, we have taken it and we have balanced the balance sheet. So, it means we can make out therefore, alpha corporations we calculated the gross profit and the gross profit figure was 43,715. Then we uh, further went down to the next step but then when we calculated the net profit which worked out as 26,360 and then we came down to check the financial position of the firm and both the sides are equal and the positive part here is that because of the net profit their capital is appreciating the capital which was 56,755 that has become now 83,115 83,115 so capital is appreciating. So, it means it is a good sign for the firm and then sundry creditors who are the suppliers of the firm they are worth of 6300 rupees not a big deal not a big figure it is acceptable. Then you have outstanding salaries which we have to pay later on. So, all the liabilities are 90,915 all the assets which include your land machinery buildings plant uh, and then sundry data credit sales figure is only just you can say about 14,500 it is not a big figure. If you compare it to the sales we have taken the sales figure is of how much 98,780 almost 1 lakh of the sales and 15 percent of the sales are on credit that is not a big deal that is acceptable figure and uh, bad debts we have also accounted for closing stock is also not left much cash is also not very high that is a good sign and uh, their other assets are also there. So, by taking this into account we have prepared the balance sheet for this company and uh, we have seen that yes both the sides are balanced and their financial position is good. And, uh, uh, means uh, there is no doubt that whatever the total investment they are making by uh, say borrowing money or say by way of the capital by having the resources from the sundry creditors or maybe by some uh, outstanding salaries. Salaries I told you that this is basically a spontaneous finance because employees work for 30 days in a year and they do not ask for any uh, salary till 30 days. So, it means this is spontaneous finance you can call it as the sundry creditors also say spontaneous finance this is the long term finance. So, in this form we have the two sources that is the long term finance and spontaneous finance there are no funds from the short term finance and if you look at the liability and the asset side position then both the sides are equal it means the balance sheet of this form is balanced. So, some now little more complex kind of the problems we will be talking now we will we'll continue talking because financial statements preparation is the most important part in this subject. So, we will learn from every angle what are the different uh, ways and means from every angle we will try to learn to prepare the different kind of financial statements and then once we are total well versed with the process of preparing the financial statements then I will take you to the next step that is the analysis of the financial statements. So, in the next lectures also or couple of lectures also we will be talking about the more financial statements more profit and loss account more balance sheets of the different types till then thank you very much.